hi if you're new to my channel please click the red subscribe button and the notification bell thank you for coming hi i'm ulu kemi i'm excited to have you here again this is question 11 germ physics 2018 which goes to us when left in the freezer a bottle full of water cracks on freezing into ice because of the okay first let us take a look at um, some concept about water water is an unusual substance that expands when it freezes okay good so the effective density of ice is more than that of liquid water so when water gets solidified to form ice it is arranged in a tetrahedra open case like structure geometrically okay so a water molecule a water molecule forms four intermolecular hydrogen bond so that the effective volume increases okay take note of that all right that is to say anomalous expansion okay and hence the glass bottle filled with water okay breaks when water freezes okay so now let's take a look at the answer option answer option a says increase in the volume of water oh yes we just say that a water molecule forms for intermolecular hydrogen bond so that the effective volume increases so this answer option is correct but let's just take a look at the other answer option option b contraction of the bottle the bottle never contracts okay so this answer option is wrong option c expansion of the bottle there is no expansion in the volume of the glass bottle so this answer option is wrong then option d says decrease in the volume of water rather the water the volume of the water increases okay so this is also wrong so answer option a is the right answer thank you for watching Again, this is question 12, Gem Physics 2018, which goes thus. The phase difference between waves P and Q and the diagram above is these two waves are two oscillators that have the same frequency as we can see, but different phases. Okay, if they have the same phase, they would have, uh, we would definitely be seeing just one line of waves but this gap between the two waves is means that they are out of phase with each other and the amount of such out of phase is what the question wants us to calculate and this can be expressed either in degrees or radian and from the 
options given, it shows that we are going to measure this in radian. But let us just go through um, um, the two so that we can understand better. So it is measured in degrees from 0 to 360. So we have 90. The next is 180 followed by 270 before we get to 360 degrees. Okay. Good. So then the equivalent of the radian is at 0 is 0. At 90 it is pi over 2. At 180 it is pi. At 270 it is 3 pi over 2. At 360 it is 2 pi. In fact, I'm just mentioning that so that you can understand this is radian. Okay? Good. So now, if we go to look at the phase, the wave P, where did it start from? First, let us just analyze this, um, the degrees or the radian. Okay? So from 0 up to the crest here, it is 90 degrees. And this is the equivalent in radians, okay? Then at this point, it is 180 degrees. This is the equivalent. At this point, it is 270 degrees. This is the equivalent. Then at this point, it is 360. That is when it makes the complete revolution, okay? So this is the equivalent. So looking at the waves P and Q, let's assume that they are uh, in the same phase. That means we won't see and we won't see double waves line like this. We're going to see just one single line. So so this is before 90. So it is half of 90. So one wave is ahead of the order half of 90. That is, let's put that in calculation. Okay, half of 90, this is 90, so we want to divide it. That is divided by half. Okay, all right. So if we solve this further, this is what we have. Pi over 2 times 1 over 2. And this will give us pi over 4. So this is the radian difference between, that is the phase difference between the wave P and Q. So let us check the answer option. Answer option C is the right answer. Thank you for watching. This is question 13, Jam Physics 2018, which goes to us. The change in volume when 450 kg of ice is completely melted is. So the change in volume is equal to the difference between the volume of ice and the volume of water. Okay, so first we're going to find the volume of ice. So the volume of ice is equal to the mass of the cube, which we are given in the question is 450 kilograms to be divided by the density of the ice, which is also given in the question as 900, okay? So if we divide further on, we are going to arrive at 0 0.5 meter cube, okay? Good. So next we go to find the volume of water. So the volume of water is equal to the mass given in the question, 450 kilogram, the same mass with the ice, to be divided by the density of the water, which is given in the question as 1000. Okay, so if we divide for the run, we're going to arrive at 0 0.45 meter cube. All right. So now we can successfully input this value. Okay, so now the volume, the change in volume is equal to the volume of ice, which we found as 0 
minus the volume of water, which is 0 0.45. So if we subtract this, we arrive at 0 0.05 meter cube. All right, good. So the answer option C is the right answer. Thank you for watching. And this is question 14, Jam Physics 2018. And the question goes thus. Teapots are often silver coated to prevent heat loss by A, conduction only. Talking about conduction is talking about the most significant means of heat transfer within a solid or between solid objects okay so this does not apply to a pot being uh, silver coated all right so this is not correct all right then what about the second option convection convection this is the transfer of heat from one point to another point by the bulk movement, the bulk movement of the fluid itself. Okay, good. So this also is not applicable to a pole being silver coated. All right. So, uh, then the third option C, convection and conduction. Both are not applicable. Now let's look at the last option, radiation. In the case of radiation, the hotter the object, the greater the amount of radiant heat emitter. And so the silver inner lining prevents heat loss through radiation because the radiant heat will be reflected back into the hot water inside by the silver inner lining okay so option d is the correct answer thank you for watching this is question 15 jam physics 2018 and the question goes to us if a force of 50 newton stretches a wire from 20 meter to 20.01 meters what is the amount of force required to stretch the same material from 20 meters to 20.05 meters okay so um let us write out some important values so the original length as given is 20 meters then the first the first new length okay we we'll see is 20.01 meters so then we are going to experience that the first increase okay which is increase in length which is equal to the which is equal to the new length which we have as 20.01 minus the original length and that will give us 0 0.01 meters okay good and next we are to 
find the second increase in length so and we know that the original length we have that which is now the new length which we have as 20 okay then the second new length which we have here is 20.05 so if we subtract 20 from 20.05 we have the second new length at 0 0.05 meters. So now we go to the Hooke's law, which states that force is equal to the constant, the spring constant times the amount of extension E. So with this, we derive. K equals force over the extension. So that is what we're going to apply now. So we have F1, that is the first force over the first extension, equal to F2 over E2. So now we go ahead to substitute the values. So for F1, we have at 50. The force extension here we have 0 0.01, which is equal to the second force. That is exactly what we're looking for. Okay. Then the second extension we have at 0 0.05. So let me move this up a little bit. So now we can cross multiply. And if we do that, we have F2 equals. 50 times 0 0.05 to be divided by 0 0.01. And if we punch in a calculator, okay, let us quickly do that. So now you see we have 50 times 0 0.05, okay, to be divided by 0 0.01. That gives us 250 Newton. Okay, so this is the amount of force that is required to stretch the same material from 20 meters to 20.05. So the answer option A is the right answer. Thank you for watching. This is question 16, Jam Physics 2018, which goes to us. Which of the above are used for characterizing waves? So if you look at the options, it seems that um, it's only three or two of the given uh, uh, concepts above that are used for characterizing waves. Okay, so just take note of that. So we already know that, but I want us also to just quickly do um, a quick and rough um, diagram depicting the features of a wave okay so i'm going to do that now silently So this is a quick um, diagram showing a f future of a wave, okay? So uh, let us now go through the options. We have option one, wavelength. Yes, wavelength is the distance adjacent crest measured in meter. Okay, this is measured in meter. So this is used for characterizing waves, all right? The second option, medium of propagation medium of propagation is not used for characterizing waves okay in fact the nature of the wave will determine its medium of propagation so this is not included in what is used for characterizing waves then uh, okay this is let's mark this that is included then the total option wave velocity 
with velocity has to do with the horizontal speed of a point on the wave as it propagates and it is measured in distance that is meter over second. So it is also used in characterizing waves. All right, the fourth option, frequency. Frequency is the number of complete waves that pass a point in inverse seconds or hertz. So this is also used as uh, for characterizing waves. Then lastly, energy. All waves carry energy, okay? All waves carry energy. And sometimes this energy could be felt like uh, an earthquake could shake the whole city, okay? But nevertheless, wave is a common term for a number of different ways in which energy is transferred. But energy is not used for characterizing waves, okay? So if we look at the options, let's see which of the options has one, three, and four. So option one, no. Option two, no. Option C, yes. So option C is the right answer. Thank you for watching. This is question 17, Jam Physics 2018, which goes to us. A 50 watt electrical, sorry, a 50 watt electric heater is used to eat a metal block of mass 5 kg. If in 10 minutes a temperature rise of 12 degrees Celsius is achieved, the specific heat capacity of the metal is. First, we assume that all the electrical energy produced is converted to heat energy. So, we can write that the electrical energy input or supplied is equal to the heat energy absorbed by the object. Okay, good. So next, the electrical energy supplied, which is the electrical power times the time, okay, is equal, which is equal to the heat energy absorbed, and that is the mass times the specific Heat capacity times the change in temperature. Okay, good. So now going to the question, we can find the values of this given equation. So for the power, we have as 50 watts. So we write 50 times the time, which was given as 10 minutes. And we have to convert the minute to seconds. So we have 10 times. 60. Okay, good. Then for the mass, we're given in the question as 5 kg. Okay, the specific heat, C, that is exactly what we're looking for. Then the change in temperature, which is the rise in temperature given in the question is 12 degrees. All right, so now we can look for the value of C. Okay, so if we solve for C, we have C equals with a variable side by 5 and 12 and that is 60 because this times this will give us 60 and the whole of these 50 times 10 500 times 60 will give us 3000 okay to be divided by 60 okay and this will give us a final answer 500 joules per kilogram per Kelvin. Okay, good. So now the answer option B is the right answer. Thank you for watching. This is question 18, Jam Physics 2018, which goes to us. Metal rods of length 20 meter each are laid end to end to form a bridge at 25 degrees Celsius 
what gap will be provided between consecutive rays for the bridge to withstand 75 degree Celsius? On this brings us to the linear expansivity equation, okay, which is L2 or the new length minus the original length L1, okay, to be divided by the product of the original length times the change in temperature, okay, or rise in temperature, all right. So now what we are asked to look for is the gap, and the gap implies that the difference between the new length and the original length. That is where we get the gap. So this is what we are looking for. So we can just cross multiply. So we have the gap L2 minus L1 bracket on the left hand side, while on the right hand side we have the linear expansivity which is given in the question as 2.0 times 10 raised to the power minus 5 times the original length which were given is what 20 good times the change in temperature or rise in temperature the initial temperature was 25 and the later temperature the expanded temperature which is 75 so 75 okay let me just 75 minus 25 all right so we solve for the row we have 2.0 times 10 raised to the power minus 5 times 20 okay then times 75 minus 25 which we give us 50 okay good so if we solve for the wrong we have 200 times sorry 20 times 50 that gives us 1000 so 1000 times 2.0 we give us 2000 okay times 10 raised to power minus 5 and if we are to um, simplify further we multiply 2000 by 10 raised to power minus 5 that means we go to the left one two three four five that is 0 0.02 meters that is the gap all right so if we go to the answer option answer option a is no it's not answer option a sorry answer option d is the right answer thank you for watching this is question 19, Germ Physics 2018, and the question goes thus. Transverse waves can be distinguished from longitudinal waves using the characteristic of... First, let's talk about transverse waves. Okay? Good. So, transverse wave is a moving wave that consists of oscillations occurring perpendicular that is right angle to the direction of energy transfer or the propagation of the wave for instance let us uh, let me just draw a quick illustration of this wave it goes like this okay so this is an example of a transverse wave what about talking about longitudinal waves these are waves in which the displacement of the medium 
is the same is in the same direction of propagation of the wave okay this is an example of a longitudinal wave okay good so now let's go to the options to look at the particular characteristic that is associated with transverse wave that distinguished it from the longitudinal waves. Okay, good. So option A says diffraction. Option A, diffraction. Option B, refraction. Option C, polarization. Yes. Polarization is a property applying to transverse wave that specifies the geometrical orientation of the oscillations. Okay, so this is how the polarization of a wave looks like okay so the answer option c is the right answer thank you for watching this is question 20 jam physics 2018 which goes to us a man exerts a pressure of 2.8 times terrorist power 3 newton meter square on the ground and has four times 10 raised to the power minus 2 meters square of his feet in contact with the ground. The weight of the man is, the weight of the man in question is the force of the man. Okay, so, and this brings us to the equation, which is the formula of pressure equals force over area. Okay. So since we are looking for force, we make that the subject of the formula, which means pressure times area. And pressure times area is equal to pressure, we're given in the equation as 2.8 times 10 raised to the power 3 times the area, which also is given in the equation as 4 times 10 raised to the power minus 2. So if we now punch in a calculator 2.8 times 10 raised to the power 3 which is going to be that means that 2800 okay because the dot we go 1 2 3 okay times the minus 10 raised to the power minus 2 which means that the decimal point we go 1 2 that is times 0 0.04 okay and that will give us 112 newton okay so this is the weight of the man so the answer option d is the right answer Thank you for watching. See you in the next video. Bye-bye.